So this is lecture 16 and in today's lecture we will discuss something that's known as dictionaries. So that's another, I would say, an important uh, Python object that we'll discuss today. And we have some idea of what this object uh, is like because it is it builds off of like sets in the sense that this is like, if you're familiar with other languages, you know what hash maps are or what hash tables are. So that's exactly what dictionaries are. But of course, we'll go into the detail of like, how to create dictionaries, what exactly do we mean when we create dictionaries and why they are so important and in, in, in terms of the efficiency, right? So we saw that that we can, we have these this theoretical way of finding out the efficiency of any algorithm or any code that we write, right? And so based on that, we figured that like in sets, when uh, like in the last lecture, when we were trying to find out like the number of a unique names in my IMDB file, and I create a list-based solution, right? So the list-based solution was essentially in order n squared uh, complexity. Why? Because uh, we had this outer for loop that was going through every name, and then there was this inner if that was scanning through the entire list and checking if the name exists or not, right? So a for and an if was an order n squared, and so we came up with sets and that was just like an, an order one operation, which which made our life really easy because it was independent of my input size. And dictionaries build on that concept, and we'll see how they help us create more efficient solutions. All right. So the question again, we are working with the IMDb file, and earlier we were trying to find out like the names of unique individuals in the file, right? But now we are building on that problem and we are saying, how about we count movies for each person? Because if you remember the IMDB file, it had the name of the, the like the name of the person and then the movie and then the year, right? So the same person appeared multiple times and we know that, right? So how about we go and count movies for each person? Because that will help us answer who is the busiest of them all. Whoever appeared in the most number of movies is the bu busiest. So then we can answer that question. Or what movies do, do people two people have in common? So maybe we can have a list of, uh, or maybe a data structure that has the name of the uh, person, and then what movies they appear in. So once we have that, then we can say, okay, these are the common movies, right? So all of that information can be extracted uh, in many different ways, obviously. And we know two important data, we know one important data structure for now, which is like a list, right? So when, let me first give you an overview of what we are trying to do. So we have like this IMDB file, right? And this IMDB file has like names of individuals and then the movies that they appeared in, right? Movies and then uh, year, I'm not interested in that. So I'll just like extract name and movies. And I want to uh, keep a track of like name one, the name of the actor and the number of movies they appeared in. So let's say this name one, which is like actor one, maybe appeared in like, let's say three movies, right? And so maybe in terms of getting the final solution, I can have a list of lists. So for every name, for example, name two, right? Have like appeared in two movies and so on, right? So this is like a list-based solution, which I'm going to build first because we are aware of this. And like, what happens if I'm trying to use sets here? Uh, can we do something with sets? Remember what sets do? All right, so if like I'm trying to create a set, then it's difficult for me to kind of uh, create a set and put all the names there because they just like keep track of unique names. So I cannot, of course, like there has to be some uh, update in my set-based solution that can help me achieve that. But the way we looked at sets last time, at least, we cannot like accomplish this because I, a name will be repeated and I need to count it, right? So what I'm looking at at first is my list-based solution. So let's look at this list-based solution and let's also figure out what are some of the important drawbacks of this solution and why we need a data structure like a dictionary, right? So let's look at this list-based solution. Eventually, this is what we need, right? I'll come up with, and this is based off of the Hanks file only. And so Hanks, Jim Hanks appeared in three movies and like every, uh, this actor appeared once and once and twice and so on, right? So we need a list of lists that look something like this. Let's, let's try to build that first. 
So what I'll do is I'll copy this part from here because we know how to parse the code. And maybe I did copy just now. Right, yeah. So here I'm just reading the file. Always remember whenever you're reading user input, it has to be a dot strip uh, because we want to uh, remove unnecessary spaces. And here I'm creating an empty list, all right? And all I'm doing here is that I'll go into the IMDB file, whatever the name of the file is, and obviously we'll test with the hands file first. And then here is like, I'm doing a dot split. Remember how the file looks like? So it has these delimiters. When I do a dot split, it's going to create a list. And in that list, the name of the actor is like the very first element. And so I'm picking that up here. Again, doing a dot strip, why? Because I don't want unnecessary spaces, okay. So the solution is to create a list of lists, right? And if the name, if, if that sublist with that name exists in my count list, then I should just like add a count to one, right? What I mean is if we look at this here, let's say I started to build this, this is my count list. So initially it's going to be empty, right? And so I'll have to go and create like a sublist with the name of the actor and one, right? But when I come here next time, this will exist. So this name exists. And if the name exists, I don't have to create a new sublist. Instead, I just need to update the count. So that's what we are trying to do here. Uh, let me begin. And what I'm trying to do here is that I'm creating a flag and I'm calling it found equals false. Uh, why a flag? Because if it's a new like uh, name, then I'll, I'll go and create an if construct where I'll say if not found, because if not false is true, and then create that new sublist. But if it is there, right, then I have to go into the count list and check it's there and just update the count. So that's why I have this flag here. So for uh, some variable in count list, here I'm assuming that count list has some um, elements already, and we'll have like an if statement if it does not have, right? So if pair zero. Now, what is this pair in count list? I'm referring to the sub list, right? Now the sub list is this thing here. If like variable, which is this, and we've looked at list of lists. So we know that when I'm saying if variable in list, then it's picking up the sub list, right? So I'm checking if the first element already exists, right? If it's equal to the name that I just read in, then all I have to do is just update my count, right? So it's going to be pair at position one, which is my count. Just go and do a plus one, right? And then stop the loop, get the next name or do something else. So let's see what is that something else. So I'm going to say found equals true. Why am I doing that? That's because I don't want these multiple sublists to get created because I'm coming out of this loop and I have this like if not uh, found. What is this not found going to do? If my found is true, then this is going to be false. That means it's not going to come here once we have done this, right? It's not going to come here. But if found is not true, that means this wasn't found, this wasn't done here, then it's going to come here, right? So when it comes here, that means this name does not exist already in the list. So I have to go and create a new sublist. So I'm creating a new sublist, like directly create a list. That's it, name. And then this was found for the first time. So the count is one. That's it. And then count underscore list dot append this new pair. All right, so that's it. That's, that's, that's all. So my count list should have the names of like all uh, the actors and then their count as well. And whenever like it's found again, it will go here in this if. If it's not found, then it's going to just uh, update, like create this new sublist and add it to my count list. Now this can be like really big for it, especially for the IMDB uh, bigger files, the two bigger files. So of course we'll start testing with the Hanks file and that's what you should always be doing. Like begin with the Hanks file, the smaller one, and then uh, move forward. So let me just print it because count list is nothing but a list. So let me just like go and print it. So for pair in count list, right? Uh, print maybe uh, this, actor appeared in, I don't know how many movies or movie movies. Of course, some of them are gonna be like in more than one movie. So that's that dot format. 
Now I'm, I'm reading off of this count list. So the like pair zero is the name, right? So pair zero is the name and the second one, the number of movies is pair one, right? So let's like test this with uh, the hangs file first to see if our code works fine. If it does not, then obviously we'll go in and update my code somewhere. And the second thing is, uh, uh, like I recommend everybody to go and also import time and like go and time your uh, code when it when you're running it with the bigger IMDB file, right? So I'm not doing it right now because I know it will take a lot of time and we will see why it takes so much time, right? So let me just run it with Hank's file to test if the code works fine. Hanks.txt. Uh, all right. So here is the name of the actor appeared in six movies, 10, 1, uh, 41, and so on. Okay, all right. All of this information is good. And if I'm going to like run this with the bigger IMDB file, because I've tested it before, uh, the list-based solution, it takes like a very long time. So I'm not, I don't want to run it right now and just like uh, make the computer uh, hang forever. But we are concerned, like why does it take so much time? Why do you think this solution will take so much time, especially when we have like 25,000 values? Now this this file is a small smaller file. It has like hardly, I don't know, 50 or some uh, values. So that's fine, right? But with the 25K values, it's going to run for a very long time. And without the time module, we can still say why it's going to take that, that much time. So can you figure out how, why it's taking so much time? Uh, all right, I'm looking at these questions first of all. Chase, I'm sorry if I didn't get your question. You're saying your notebook is too large. I just updated uh, the the submittee uh, like um, file limit to the max, so I cannot go beyond that. So maybe you'll have to figure out how to make it uh, less than that. I think it's 100 MB or something. Okay, let me look at the answers. So Danielle, your answer is because it has to search every element in the list. Okay, Eliana, your question is because it opens each line. All right, most of you are getting very close to what we are trying to look at here, and that's an excellent uh, point because this is like a list-based solution and something is happening here. So let me go into the details of what exactly is happening here. Even without like timing my code, I can tell that it is not going to work with like uh, 25K values, which is like my IMDB 2010 to 2012. What I mean by not going to work is like it's going to take a very long time. So if, we, if you remember, we have this like order uh, N notation where N is the size of my input. And it gives an approximate uh, kind of uh, idea of how much effort your uh, code will take to, to execute in general, right? So this is telling me that my code here is going to read every element, right, for the outer for loop, because like I have this file, right, that has like these N elements, like first line, second line, so N lines, right? So this is for every line N, right? I go inside, and remember this N used to be like the worst case, correct? So the worst case that can happen is that every actor appeared in one movie, which means here my count list is going to grow, grow like, like the first time, of course, like there is no value. So it's going to have like a one sub list and then two sub list, but eventually it will come to a point when my for loop is going to go and scan each of these sub lists that are being created here or that are being updated. So every time it's, get, it's getting added or updated, I have like these range of, of values, right? Which like in the worst case, of course, in the best case, it's like every, like just one actor appeared in every movie and that was it, right? But the worst case is that every actor appeared in just like one movie. So like we can have like N sub lists. And this order, uh, like big O notation is for that worst case complexity. So for every N, I have another set of N that I have to scan which was this, the same case like in, in the previous lecture when, when we talked about the list-based solution. So the order complexity of this solution is order n squared. So what does that mean? Like 25,000 squared, right? So these are the number of operations, roughly speaking, your code will have to do to execute that. 
which of course in the hangs file was fine for any computer to do like 40 i'm assuming it's like it's having 40 n but maybe it is more i don't know but like 1600 operations still doable not 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 something bad but as your size of n grows this is going to grow and it will take a lot of time and so roughly speaking that's why this is a bad solution and so we need a better way of capturing solutions like these so we saw that like with the unique names problem we can uh, like use the sets set based solution but for this we need to capture the name of every actor for example and that should point to their count of like movies and uh, for a situation like this what we need is something that's known as a dictionary and of course if you're familiar with other languages you know hash maps and so that's what we we will talk about okay an improved version of the list based solution could be a sorted uh, list and let me uh, walk through that solution i'm not going to write it because uh, we'll have we won't have time and i think i've posted that on the website so let me see uh, uh here yes so here we're doing everything that's similar and you can go in and check that but what i'm doing here is i'm like just going and appending every name to my count list that's it right once i've done that i just go and sort it so this is like count list dot sort right and what will happen in sort let's say there was this actor who appeared many times right and because i added every name in my list so the like actor one actor two all their names will be together right so so you'll have like actor one actor one actor one let's say if they appeared three times and then actor two actor two actor two if they appeared three times or, or two times or whatever right so i'm going to go into that like um into that list and then i'm going to count like when the change happens and keep keep a track of that and again of course create this um uh, uh, count variable and keep printing that count variable so i'm not really uh, saving it in some list of lists so why is it like slightly faster than the previous version that's because like the dot sort as i said last time in python is optimized and it's not n squared it's like n log n so this solution is going to be n log n and also we are like not keeping uh like uh track of all the names like we are not saving it anywhere we're just like printing them out right so this is going to be slightly faster but again like the worst case could be like really bad and uh and, and so that's why we are talking about dictionaries now okay so as I said, the fastest version using using dictionaries. But before that, we need to understand what are dictionaries, right? I've mentioned that like multiple times. Of what exactly is a dictionary? And so let me give you this nice example, which I usually use, but I somehow lost the nice picture that I had. And so I'll have to draw, and my drawing skills are really bad. So in a list, what are we doing? Like we have like this container, and imagine this is like that Pringles uh, box where you have those wafers in there, right? And you have like these wafers in this order, right? So this can be like compared to a list where if you want to, if you want this wafer, right? You, you will have to first go through this one and then this one and then this one eventually then arrive here, right? So this is like similar to the list data structure where, where this is like a sequential search in the sense that I have to begin with the very first element and then keep going until I arrive at the last one. And so there is no way I can directly grab the last one right uh, okay so and now, now imagine that you have like this bag and as i said very bad drawing skills i don't know if it looks like a bag or not <laughs> but but yeah let me show you what the idea is uh the idea is let's say i have like a wallet right and i have like uh keys here or i don't know some something else like i don't know some like a, a lot of basically objects in the bag right and let's assume i need my credit card and so i know that this is my wallet right and my credit card is in this wallet right my credit card is in this wallet so i just like go inside my bag i grab my wallet and take out the credit card so it's not like i sequentially go through this this object and then this object and this object and this object and then reach my wallet all i do is just like go inside the bag grab the wallet because i know that my credit card is in there right so this is what dictionaries actually represent in python that means i have like a key value pair right so key and a value 
usually I search for a value, which is my credit card, right? And to reach, sorry, credit card, not card. And, and to reach to that value, I use a key, which is a wallet in this case, right? So every value in my uh, dictionary is saved in like a bag form, which is like an unordered set. Right, so similar to sets. So as I said last time, sets are a special case of dictionaries. Right, again, unordered because there is no order in a bag. It's just like you put things there, that's it. But why is it so convenient? It's convenient because I don't have to sequentially get this like last element as I was doing in like this box of Pringles. I don't have to sequentially get every element. I just like jump to that key and get the value. Jump to the key and grab the value, that's it, right? So this is the high level general idea of a dictionary. And now we're gonna see how we create a dictionary, how do we access elements in a dic dictionary and what all types are allowed in a dictionary. But always keep this picture in mind because this helps. Many times people get confused with like using the same logic as you're using with lists, which is not necessarily the case with um, dictionaries because you have this added advantage, right? And so you should utilize that instead of like sequentially searching for everything. All right, so let's go and see what's going on here. Uh, let's first create our dictionary and let me see if we have questions before we move on. Uh, all right, uh, I see a lot of uh, answers here. Caesar, you're right, it's a huge list and as the list grows, our solution gets worse. Uh, Lenny's your uh, like question is, so nested for loops aren't good solution for big text file. Yeah, excellent, yeah, that's the, Key idea, that's a fundamental idea. If you're working with a lot of data, nested loops in general, and then lists in specific are not a good idea. And uh, like one of the options is using sets, but then we just saw that with problems like these, we cannot directly use sets. So now you have dictionaries. Uh, so yes, the answer is that uh, you should try avoiding if there is a lot of data. If there isn't a lot of data, if not expecting a lot of data, then go ahead and use lists because of course they are flexible, they are they are easy to use and then we are pretty familiar with them, right? Uh, so yes. All right, so jumping back to dictionary, as I said, these are unordered bag of things, right? And the first dictionary that I'm creating to be consistent with the lecture notes is called heights. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save names of animals and their heights. So the names of the animals are going to be keys and their heights are going to be values. And we'll talk a lot about like what keys can be, what values can be. Let's look at the very basic, very simple dictionary and then we'll go into the details of like what everything can be. Okay, so the name of the dictionary is heights, right? And I'm saying heights equals a dictionary. So this is one way of creating an empty dictionary. Let me show you. Uh, heights and so it has created a dictionary type. If you go and do a type on uh, heights, you're going to get a DICT. Another way of creating dictionaries and is these curly brackets. So the, a little bit about this, you've seen this before, right? And you've seen it with sets. And as I said, sets are a special case of dictionaries. But here's the thing, if you're creating like with these empty brackets, like these kind of uh, curly braces and nothing inside it, by default, it is going to be a dictionary and not a set. Uh, so let me show you this and then uh, type and then bytes. Right, it is a dictionary if, if I create it like this. Now then what's the difference? Like if you are interested in creating a set, an empty set, always create it like this, right? Because if you use curly brackets, then that is going to create a dictionary by default. Well, of course, if you have values in your set, you know what values you want to add, then this notation is fine because we'll see why this is fine. Because these are only the keys. And if you remember, I said in dictionaries, you have like key value pairs. So if you have values for a set, then go ahead and use the curly brackets. If you don't have any values for your set and it's just an empty set, then always use like this thing. Otherwise that is going to create dictionaries. All right, so that was just a side note. Uh, let me comment this. Okay, so heights. Heights is a dictionary now, and I obviously want to add values because it doesn't have anything. It's an empty dictionary. So this is how we are going to add key value pairs. So always in a dictionary, we have something called as key and 
sorry, key uh, colon value pairs. Let's see how they are added. And so the way I'm going to add is that I'll write the name of the dictionary, heights, right? Square brackets. And in the square brackets, my uh, the, the first key type that I'm creating is a string type. So that's why it quotes the name of the animal. So Belgian horse. I think that's the name that's given in the lecture notes. Uh, equals. So Belgian horse is my key. Key is the name of the animal. And I decided that the value is going to be its height. And so I'm giving it height, 162.6. All right. So what is this? What is this telling me? Well, heights is a dictionary. And go and add this key, that's Belgian horse, that has this value. And the values can be anything. The values can be numbers. They can be uh, floats, integers, string, lists, anything. We'll talk about keys because there is some restriction about it. But for now, just like remember, string type can always be used as a key. Let me execute this and show you how height look, looks like now. So let me just type height and look, this is how, how my dictionary looks like, right? So I have the key, this is my key, and this is my value. So this is a key value pair. Let me add one more, then it will be, become clear to you like how can we add multiple key value pairs, right? So the next one that I'm adding, and let me just like copy this and just update a few things. So this is how we add values to my dictionary. So instead of Belgian horse, I think there's Indian elephant. Let me add that. Indian elephant. This is obviously taller than this. So 280. Uh, let's execute this. And let's check what's there in height. Now here it is. This is the dictionary that I just created, right? So there is a key and corresponding value. And then the next key value pair is separated by this comma, right? So every key value pair will be separated by a comma, just like in lists, just like in sets. But we don't have a single value, we have a key value pair. This is important because I'm going to access every value using that key. Let me add more elements here and then we can do lots of different things with this, right? So let me show you, let me keep adding. How about we just copy from the lecture notes? I want to type all that. All right, so here, let me just add this. I'm not doing anything like different. I'm just adding more key value pairs, right? So let me add tiger, let me add lion, and let's see how my heights looks like, right? All right. Uh, oops, okay, that's wrong spelling. Uh, okay, looks good to me. All right, so here it is. Uh, we have a key value pair, key value pair, again, unordered. That's extremely important. This might look like this is ordered because of like the way this is appearing here, but there is no order, so there is no position of these elements. There is no position, it's just like sets, right? And the, now the question arises, how do we access these things? Now I've put, things in my bag, right? So I have like a key value pair, a key value pair. How do we access them once they are there in my uh, dictionary? So there are many ways of, of doing it. Usually we do it through a key. And uh, the very first thing is whether a key exists or not. That's the very first thing that you would like to uh, like ask, right? So one way of finding out whether a key exists or not, because everything has to go through the key. So maybe like make a note of that. You cannot directly access the value by bypassing the key. That's impossible in a dictionary, right? So um, there are many ways, as I said. One quick way is I can check tiger in heights. So whenever I'm doing it, this is essentially saying whether, like this is going to obviously uh, check for a true or a false, if this exists in my dictionary or not, right? So this exists because this is a key, right? And so this uh, will work. Uh, let me show you what I'm trying to say. Let's say I'm saying, 91.0 in heights, which of course is there, right? But it's a value, right? So let's see. This is going to return a false, right? So why is it returning a false? Although it's there because it's the value. And as I am repeating, remember the picture of that bag, right? I cannot access the credit card directly. I have to go through the wallet. I have to go and open, grab the wallet, open it, and then get the credit card. So that's the same thing here. I cannot bypass my key. 
everything has to go through the key. Everything has to be accessed through the key. So I cannot like, if this is not a key, I am going to get a false, right? So that's the fundamental idea behind dictionary. This is how you create key value pairs, how you add them to a dictionary and how you access them. Uh, let me quickly go through the, all right, now I'm going to show you how we can convert like these two lists because many times we need that. Uh, let me quickly show you what I mean by that. A few methods essentially. So the very first method is you can always do like this, heights dot keys, right? And this is going to give you a dictionary type object, which is not as useful when you're writing code. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, height dot keys. Okay, you're getting this like keys here. Of course, these are the keys in my heights. But notice this dictionary object, which of course like is a is an iterable. And uh, the, the thing is that because it, it is like related to the dictionary object type, you cannot directly use it in like whatever data structures or whatever uh, coding uh, like tools we are aware of, right? So usually if you need keys, you should convert them to lists. So that's why an added step here would be if you want to use these keys in your code, you should always do a list. So that's going to internally convert it to a list and then use it because this is this is not helping me much, except if I'm, because I said, as I said, this is like an iterable type, so I can use it when I'm using loops. And that's like the topic of the next lecture. So I'm not even going there. Uh, let's do this. Now you can see this is a list that you're so much familiar with, and so you can use it directly. Uh, all right. Another way of converting it to a list is by using this function sorted. And I think I talked about it last time as well, with sets, like sets get converted to a sorted list. Similar to that, you can sort uh, the keys and then that gets converted to a, a sorted uh, list as can be seen here, right? So both list and sorted converts it to a list. You can al also do something like this, right? List and instead of dot keys, use dot values. That can be done because this again returns the, let me show you, this, this returns a dictionary object type. It's saying all these are the values in my dictionary, right? So if I am somehow able to convert it to like list, then I can use it. But again, uh, if you're trying to map it back to the key, you will have to access the key and get the value. So that's like the convention. But of course you can get the list of values if you just need them directly. So just do heights dot values because internally this dot values is going to access the key and get you the values directly. All right, these are some of the basic methods. Of course, there are more methods that we'll keep uh, looking at some of them we are going to look at today. Uh, some of them we are going to look at in the next lecture. Uh, so uh, let me go back to the uh, IMDB problem. But before that, uh, let me take questions. Uh, all right, John, your question is, if you made a key value pair with Belgian, uh, but then called for a Belgian horse, would it call? No, it has to be the exact same thing. No, it will not because you are expecting it and let me show you. This exact thing is my key and there is no way I can uh, like bypass that. So if I'm saying, and even like it's case sensitive. Let me show you. Okay, and this, right? So that's true, that's there. Okay, let me just. So that's returning a false, right? Because it's not there. So it's also case sensitive. And that's a good question. Actually, even if I had something like this and instead of this, because strings are in itself, like this is a different string than this one, right? I think that's an excellent question because if you have some kind of like, you don't know what the, uh, the key is going to be, it's better to like, and you know that it's like a string type, it's better to convert it to a dot lower or something and then use it, right? So yeah, they are case sensitive because this key value is extremely important. And as I said, we are going to talk about what all key types are allowed. So this has to be hashable. And I'll talk about that. I don't want to confuse you. So there are certain restrictions on what keys can be, right? Because these have to be unique, as I said. There can be a repetition here. So what I mean by repetition is like, let's say I'll add uh, heights and I'll say 
lion again, right? But I'm saying lion 100, right? And let me execute it. Okay, and then let me see because what I'm expecting is that there are two lions, right? And well, as you can see, the, the more recent one will be added and the other one will be updated. So here I've done kind of an update to my uh, key value pair. So you cannot have like two of them, first of all. Uh, but you can have like line one or line two. So if I just like say this is line two with this, then you can have both of them because this is different from this. So keys are unique and that's an important point. You cannot have like two keys with the same because it, it just like defeats the purpose of, of this dictionary, right? Uh, if, if you want repeated elements, maybe you can have lion and then a list of values. And again, I'm coming to what all values can we have and what all uh, keys can we have. For now, we've looked at the very simple case, the extremely simple case where nothing is repeated or we didn't have that issue and the values are just like single integers of float. Uh, that's the, the simplest possible case. We are going to look at more like at a more uh, complex case uh, right after this example. All right, let me look at the other question. Uh, Kiran, your question is to use values in the in statement. Should uh, would we need to do key value in dict? Uh, yes, you can do that. So key and then uh, value. Uh, remember, the, the, like this is not how we access. So you'll have like a dictionary and then a key, right? Let me show you. This key value won't work. So you have to have a dictionary and then uh, the name of the key. For example, let me show you. Uh, if I do heights, Belgian horse, this returns the value directly. So this is how you access values, not by key and then value, but by dictionary and then value. So that's why we. this is how we add it. This is how we access it directly. Uh, Diaz, I'm not sure why you're getting that uh, attribute error. I'll have to see, uh, maybe after uh, I can check your code. I don't know, I'll have to look why you're getting that error. Uh, all right. So that's the basics of dictionaries. Now we are going back to our um, IMDB example. And let me see if we have covered everything. So we talked about both the initializations for dictionaries. Syntax is very much like subscripting. Why? Because we have looked at this syntax before, right? This is more like adding values to a list, except that I have the name of the dictionary here, right? And, uh, uh, right? Keys in this example are animal species, rights, and values are floats. The in method tests only for the presence of keys, right? Like look up a word in the dictionary without checking its definition. So that's what this in method does, right? Just take the name of the key and check whether it's there in heights or not. All right. As I said, and I'm again going to emphasize this, keys are not ordered. So always remember there is no ordering, there is no positioning of these keys. They're just like in a bag and I mean, when we print them, of course, they appear in a certain order, but there is no uh, position to them. So if you need positioning, you'll have to convert them to lists. Okay, so going like, like why, uh, and, and as I said, like just as in sets, the implementation uses hashing of keys, uh, which means like in, in general, the order complexity is constant for keys. Why? Because I can directly go and jump to that key which is like an order one operation. So I don't care how many elements are there in my, my uh, dictionary, which is what, this is what hashing refers to. It means I'm directly jumping to that key that I'm interested in. I don't care about like how many elements are there in my dictionaries because it's not a sequential search like lists. So that's why they are so like these hashing data structures are so useful. Uh, all right, so going back to our IMDB example, now how can these dictionaries help us? Well, dictionaries can help us because this is what I'm thinking about that solution when I'm trying to get the name of the individual and the count of every person. So I'll have the name as the key and the number of times they appeared in a movie as like the value, right? So I can create those key value pairs in my and essentially get a dictionary. And why would that be easier? Because like once I've created a dictionary, I can easily access and like uh, access the elements and then like print them. And so it's going to be faster access. I, I won't have like this uh, order n squared solution, rather I'll have an order n solution. So let me show you what that means. Um, the initial part is going to be similar to what we saw here. So this is 
exactly the same, except I'll have like a dictionary instead of a list and this, this stuff stays the same, right? So let's copy that here. Uh, count list instead of that, it's not a list. So let's have it as count equals the dictionary. Um, okay, and I'm opening the IMDB file, uh, creating a list in every iteration and then reading off the name, right? Now this like dictionary structure will make it so much easier. I don't have to create another dictionary that's like scans. Um, I don't have to create another piece of code rather that scans through all the elements because I can quickly go and check if a key exists in my dictionary or not. And that's it. Now that's, what, that's how this, this in method is going to help me, right? I can quickly go and check if this name, whatever this name is, it exists in my count dictionary or not. If it exists, right? Then just like update the count, right? That means just go and update the value. If it does not exist, then go and create it. Let me show you first what I'm trying to say. Now this count dictionary is initially empty, right? And I'm going to check in my count dictionary if a name exists or not, right? So let's say it does not exist, right? So I'm going to just create name one and then the value one. Why? Because it does not exist. So this is the first count of this name. Now, next time when I come in, I'll check again if name one exists or not. Well, it exists. So just like go and update this value to two, right? If it does not exist, go and add that like name two, for example, one. This, this is all that I have to do. I don't have to, uh, I would say, a loop through anything because dictionaries inherently will check whether a key exists or not which is the case here. And so this is a, this is simply an order one operation. By order one, I mean it's a constant operation. It does not matter how big my dictionary is because I don't have to scan through every element. I'll just jump to the key, check the value, and I'm done. All right, so let's actually write the code here. Uh, right, so if name in counts, right, if the name is there, then all I have to do is the name of my, it's not counts, it's count. If name in count, then all you have to do is count name because this is how I access uh, the value in my dictionary for that key. The key is the name, right? Plus equals one, right? Otherwise, otherwise, right? Otherwise, I have to do something else with that. That else is go and create this thing, right? So there, there can be like many ways of doing it. What I'm doing is like count. And then um, this name should be equal to one, right? I mean, go and create this like key value pair where the key is going to be the name and the value is going to be one. So just like we created these values here, right? So because this does not exist, so I'm going to just like, and of course there are ways of printing this out, but first I want you to have a look at the dictionary and I'm going to run it for the hangs file, of course, because we cannot look at that dictionary for larger files. And I'm also going to show you what to do if the file is larger. So first, let's look at this and then decide what to do. Um, and just by looking at it, can somebody tell me what is the uh, order O complexity of this code now? What is the order complexity in general of this code? Uh, Rochelle, you're saying order one. Um, so this part is order one, no doubt, right? But what about this part? And we take the worst case, right? So this is already, yeah, Caesar, you're right. It is order n. Uh, earlier, it was order n squared in the list-based solution. Why? Because we had another loop inside, right? So this was order n times n. But here, it's just like order n. So whatever the size of your input, that's all the effort that you have to put in. Uh, okay, so let me just show you this. Uh, let, let's run it with the hangs file first, right? So hangs.txt. Okay, so this has created this dictionary, of course, like for a bigger file, it will create a bigger dictionary, but then it's it's going to be as like big as the, the data set itself and not like n squared, right? So here you can see like we have the key, which is the actor name, the value, which is like the number of times the actor appeared in a movie and Seems correct, but I think Tom Hanks is 41. Yeah, so that's correct. 
now let's go and see if this would have been a bigger file let's say when we run it for the original imdb what are some of the ways we can let just like output some of the names right so for that what we'll do here is i'm going to create this list of this count and a sorted list well it's up to you if you just like want to convert it to a list and just print all the actors but here i'm creating creating a sorted list of names which is the keys and printing okay this actor appeared in the, the this movie just to show you like an alternate way of like printing this out that's it so this is just like something extra it totally depends on what you want to do how you want to output your code all right so names is a variable that is sorted uh, count and remember when i'm going to do sorted count this names will have a list of all the keys right so that's that and because i have a hanks file which is smaller than 100 and and so what i'm doing here is i'll talk about it okay so i'm just like taking care of the, the fact that sometimes i want to run hanks right which is like 40 or 50 uh, observations so that is going to be like 50 and the min of this is going to be 50 so it is going to run for that range if I'm running it for my IMDB file, I just want to run it for 100 elements, the first 100 ones, because I don't want to like spam uh, my computer with all the values. So that's that's what I'm doing here. Okay. So for some variable in range, sorry, limit, which is depending on the file, it's going to have some number, right? Now, this name will be equal to names and then the index so like for every name that's put here i can access my count dictionary now right and so if i'm doing a count and then square bracket name i'm actually accessing the value right so that's exactly what i'm trying to do here and print this person appeared in these many movies uh dot format okay so the person is the name and then we want the movies so i'm going to go into count access the movie so even like printing here is not that bad if you think about it right i have the names here and i can print and for example this is what it's going to appear like for like the current one but uh somebody is unmuted can you please mute yourself uh, but for the IMDB, as you can tell, uh, the bigger file, it is going to uh, just like have the top 100 uh, printed, which is going to be easier just to verify that we are getting the right values. Well, regardless, the important point here, the key takeaway is that because with, we have a dictionary-based solution here, we have come down from order n squared to order n, right? And don't just like stop there. You should also time your code. So just like import time and do a start time and an end time, all of that. And try to figure out and try to like compare this dictionary based solution with your list based solution and see which one is faster. And obviously, you can tell that this is going to be faster, way faster for the IMDb file. Also, another thing that you should test is that begin with the Hanks file, and you will see like both the solutions are very comparable, like pretty comparable in terms of the time. But as we start working with the bigger file, that is the IMDb 2010, 2012, or even the original one then this is going to like beat the list based solution easily because as the size of my input is growing here you can tell the number the amount of effort it's taken because i have this like huge count list and i have to go and scan through that every time for every uh, observation that I, that that i read in uh, all right so this was like a dictionary based solution compared to a list based solution and now because you know that uh, all these uh, hashable or data structures like sets and dictionaries they have order one operation so you should try to use that when working with like bigger files of course and there are certain and, and of course like dictionary is a huge topic and so this is like just lecture one the next lecture will be dedicated to more like details on how to work with dictionaries especially with loops so that's going to be the next lecture but today we are going to focus more on uh, the keys types and the value types so let's go to the lecture notes i think we have uh okay i think let me just see if i okay 
so that's fine let's come to the key types so this question must be coming to you first of all keys in our dictionaries like until now we've looked at them as like strings right in our imdb example this was a string type because the name is a string type right and even here the dictionary that we created is a string type and by the way that's the most common type that that is used right but that does not mean that that other uh, types are not allowed so essentially keys can be anything hashable hashable in general means something that has this like uniqueness such that like a string for example and we saw like if i just in in belgian horse i remove one character then that's a different key that's a different string so that's that's what this means so it can be an integer, a float, a boolean, or a tuple. As you can tell, like none of them can be updated. And if we update them, then that's a different uh, object in itself. Tuples cannot be updated. Boolean, float, integer, string, we are aware, like it's either this or it does not exist, right? But things that cannot be keys, so this is important. Lists, sets, and other dictionaries cannot be keys. So you have to be very careful when creating or when selecting key types. Uh, most in most cases, we have strings. Some very, uh, I would say, rare cases, we can have a tuple. When when you're trying to identify something with two variables, for example, you can have a tuple. And uh, float and boolean are not very good choices of, although they are allowed, but they are not good choices of uh, key types. Can somebody tell me why float is not a good choice of a key type? Okay, there are a few questions. I, I'm sorry, I forgot to look at the questions. Uh, Lauren, your question is, how do you know the order? If you're talking about the, the big O notation, you should check the recording of the previous lecture where I talked about uh, talked a lot, in fact, about the order notation. Uh, Huey, your question is, isn't names now a list? Yeah, that's only for printing purposes. My solution just ends here, right? So I'm just like printing the top 100. I don't want everything, right? Or maybe I just like want to find out which person appeared in which movie. I can just like go and check counts, the name of that person, and then get the number of movies, right? My solution just ended here. That was additional stuff to show you how we can like print it or maybe get output, different ways of doing that. Uh, we, June, your question is what is the mean for, what is the, oh, you mean like, what does this mean? Okay. So this means my Hanks file has only 50 values, right? And I'm creating a more generic code where I can run it for IMDB file as well. So I, for the IMDB file, I just want to output the top 100 names. Maybe you can like replace it with 50 or, or, or 200. It's up to you, whatever you want. This is just like a number. So I'm running it for those, those many numbers. If I'm running it for the Hanks file, you can tell this will error out if I just say uh, range or 200 or range 100. So that's why I have this extra variable. Uh, Huey, there is no limit to this can. I don't know why there is a confusion in your uh, mind about this because it has nothing to do with 100 or 200 or, or the list value. It has to do with the complexity of the code. When we wrote the list uh, base solution, this was an order n squared because I was creating a list of lists here. So the list of lists was growing. The whole like what it comes down to is that I, I I got rid of that list of lists and I'm now creating a, a like a dictionary. I don't know why everybody is getting confused with this. Let, let me comment. This is not even important here. I mean, this list doesn't matter. Maybe you can go and just like print that count somehow, right? Why I'm not I'm not showing you printing directly the count or like or the dictionary because we'll talk about loops and dictionaries in the next lecture. So that's why I had this like alternate way of printing the things out. So maybe wait until the next lecture and we'll see how to print directly from uh, the dictionary. So this is not even important. So don't get like uh, confused with this part of the code. Uh, Lenny, I think you're answering question that I asked and that's absolutely correct. It's not good to have like float as like your key, although it's allowed. It's because like how many decimal places and then uh, based on that you can have like infinite number of keys and that's like not a good thing to have, right? And also Booleans are not a good choice because then you can only create two pairs, like uh, true, false, and then maybe go ahead and treat them as, as uh, not Booleans and strings, but then that that is like, again, going back to creating strings. So that those two are not good choices. Of course, tuples really, as I said, are used, right? 
but mostly we use strings as dictionaries because these are like uh, hashable types. We cannot update them. Lists, you can tell, should never be used as keys. Cannot, they are not allowed. You'll get an error, by the way. Right? And as I said, strings are the most common. Now, what happens to the value types? Okay, so the values in our dictionaries have been integers and floats, but like values can be anything. That's that's the flexibility that values offers. And of course, they should offer that, right? Because that's the whole point of like creating a dictionary. I, sh I should be able to have like any value type. And so I can have a Boolean, integer, float, uh, string, list, tuple, set, and even other dictionaries. Of course, we look at creating dictionaries of dictionaries, which is also known as nested dictionaries in the next lecture. But the rest of them we can look at today. And let's begin by creating a, a dictionary that has values as sets. Okay, so let's try doing that. Okay, so let me create this uh, dictionary of people where I have like these name of actors as uh, like the key. And then the values are going to be the, the movies they appeared in. Right, and I'm doing it manually. I'm not like writing a loop or anything for that because uh, as I said, we'll talk about loops next time. So let's like add one element at a time. Okay, so I'm creating a people dictionary. This is empty, I first created. Okay, uh, next I want to add a key value pair. And the way I want to add a key value pair is that I want, of course, the key as the name of some actor. So let me have Tom Hanks as the actor just to be consistent with what we've been working with, right? And I want that this like key maps to a value that is a set of all the movies that Tom Hanks appeared in, right? And this is going to be useful for answering a lot of other questions. For instance, we are interested in knowing what all movies this particular actor appeared in, right? And so what I'm doing here is that I'm creating a set of values. And this like notice everyone, like be extra careful. Here, what I've done is that I'm saying have a key, which is Tom Hanks, and point it to a value, which is an empty set. And why will this be useful? Because then I know how to add values to a set. Okay, let me show you what this will do. Okay, and let's look at what people looks like, first of all, right? So, okay, so this is what my people dictionary looks like, right? I have the name of the actor that's pointing to an empty set. But what is the good thing here? The good thing here is that I know how to add values to a set, right? So let me go ahead and just like go and add, add values to a set, right? And so in order to do that, I should be able to access the set, correct? And the only way to access that set because that set is a value is through my key. And so this is how I can access it, right? So what I'm going to do is this people, square bracket, the name of the key is pointing to my value, right? And so I can do a dot add here. If I do a dot add, and then let's say the name of the movie is big, right? And just like execute this. Let's see what people has now. Right? So this value got added to that set because that set was a value in this. Okay, let me add another one to show you what this does. And this is allowing me to update the value that's associated with that particular key. I cannot update that key because I update that key or or maybe I go and add another uh, Hank Storm with another set, then that's going to update this. So I, what I'm doing is I'm like accessing the same key value pair and adding things to it. So for example, instead of big, I'll just like add splash. Okay, and, and let's execute this and see what's there in my people. And so this is what we wanted, right? For this particular, for this person, I just want to update the values in the set. And so the only way to do that is through the key. And I think this example is also given in the lecture notes. So of course there is another addition, right? And let's look at this, add this one as well, and then update like, sorry, just print it. So this is my people. And let's say I just want to output only the set of values, right? So in that case, I think somebody asked some time ago how to just do only that. And now I'm going to do that. Let me just like say print this. And so I'm going to print only the values that are associated with this key, which is the, this, right? 
If instead of this, I was doing print people, then it will like print my entire dictionary. Right, so this is my entire dictionary, but of course I just wanted to look at the values. And so I just accessed the keys and printed that. All right, questions, doubts about this kind of stuff. And you can tell what, what happens if I was using a list. Let me again do that uh, quick, like real quick. Uh, let's say I have a dictionary, D1, right? And what I want to do is I want to create this like key value pairs where my values are lists, right? So what I'm going to do is D1, and let's say the key value is A, I'm just like making it up, right? Equals like some empty list, right? Let's, let's look at what this does. Okay, let's look at what D1 is. Now D1 is a key that's pointing to a list. And let's assume I want to do something to that list. So I want to add a value. What should I do here exactly? Let's say I want to add 100 to that. So how am I going to write it? Yes, exactly. Lenis, you answered a dot append. So that's what I'm going to do. Just like I did a dot add, and I'm going to do a dot append which is dot append and like 100, because I know that this is a list type. If I do a dot add here, it's going to error out. Why? Because like my value is not a, a like a set type, it's a list type, right? So that's the general idea of like how to create values of different types, it's more specifically like sets or dictionary, sorry, sets and lists. Of course, we can create dictionaries. We'll see that in the next lecture. So I think I saw a question. Uh, Jake, your question is, could you make an alias for the set through the key so you don't have to type uh, people every time? Uh, well, not really. If you mean by alias, like having a short uh, value for this, uh, I don't really think so. No, because keys are like uh, uh, unique values, right? And so that's the only way to get to the value. It, it has to be through the key. So I don't think there is like, an, but, but I think this is like a short enough way of getting to the, to the set. Imagine the set having like hundred elements and I'm like going to access them using just like a single key. Maybe have like easier names for keys. That could be one, but I don't think like that is something that, that we, we would even want to do, right? Uh, all right, so going back here, there is another, Another example where we can store the continent and the population for a country. So let's also do this because um, okay, countries dot clear. So dot clear is a method that removes everything from the dictionary. This is just like to uh, illustrate that dot clear method can be used here as well. But let's only do this part and let's see what's going on here. Okay, because this is important from the perspective of accessing values in a dictionary, right? So all that's happening, and I'm I'm sure it's pretty clear now to everyone. Uh, I'm creating a like a dictionary called countries, and this dot clear is only to show you how to clear all the elements in my dictionary, which uh, is essentially like remove all the elements from my dictionary, right? Now here I'm creating like these keys, the names of the countries, and the values are tuples, right? And so let me execute all of this and see what it gives me. All uh, right, let's print countries. Okay. Okay, so as expected, the key keys are the names of the countries and the values are tuples. What if I want to access like specific things in my uh, dictionary? For example, I want to access the population of Canada. I know how to access like Canada directly. So if I do something like this, right? I get like the entire tuple. And so the way to access, let's say the population of Canada is by adding this additional square bracket here, because this is like pointing to the value already. So within the value, I'm, I want to access like position zero, right? So if I do that, then I get this, uh, like the population of Canada. If I do a one here, I get the name of the continent, right? So this is how we can access like iterables within your uh, value key value pairs, because of course I have to go through the, the route of my key. And this is like giving me the entire value, which is like a tuple. And then within the tuple, I can access like the elements using the correct indexing. And as we shall like talk more about like loops, this will become like even easier. 
But for now, like understanding the structure is enough. Let's say I want to access uh, Morocco and the uh, uh, continent. All I have to do is like change the name of the key, of course, because that's the key, and then do a zero or a one depending on what exactly I'm trying to access. Uh, okay, so this was demonstrating that values could be any type, and this is how we can add those values, and this is how we can access those values, and it's an important concept. Uh, next, we are looking at a few dictionary methods. So let's look at those. Uh, okay, removing values from sets and dictionaries. So for a set, there are two different methods, discard and remove. I'm not sure if we talked about that last time. If we haven't, let me show you how they work. Uh, there is a set, let's say, that has like some elements. And there is a slight difference in discard versus uh, remove. Okay. So if I do like S1 dot discard uh, four, of course, it is going to discard four and my S1 uh, becomes two, six, seven. And let me like recreate it to show you that my S1 dot remove four will also do the same thing. Uh, but there is a slight difference between both. Uh, remove. Four. What is S1? Okay, I recreated it. So if I do an S1 dot remove, it did the same thing, right? Now let me recreate this again. And when I say S1 uh, dot discard 100, and you can tell like 100 is not there in my set, and I'm still trying to discard that. Let me execute it, right? So it still got executed. It did not error out, although it did nothing because like. It did not have a 100 there, right? Now, if I do a similar thing with dot remove, okay? So this gives me this key error. And so that's the fundamental difference between dot remove and dot discard. If that element is not there in my set, then dot remove is going to throw this error and dot discard will not, right? Otherwise, if the element is there, then they are like exactly the same. All right. The other method like way of removing a key value pair in a dictionaries is through this function that's known as del so let me show you that and let's create a dictionary again d1 let's say equals uh, some a that points to 100 and some i don't know i'm just like making this up 200 okay this is a dictionary d1 and if i do a del I have to specify what am I trying to delete, right? So DEL, D1, and A. So let's let's do this. Let's see what happened to D1. All right, so it deleted that key value pair. So DEL is one way. And then what if I'm doing a D1 dot pop? So if I do a D1 dot pop and not provide anything there, then let's see if it works for us. So this is, this is the thing that I wanted to show you. It gives you a type error because dot pop by default does not work with dictionaries. And that goes back to the idea that dictionaries do not have any ordering. In lists, dot pop works because it just removes the last element. There is no last element in my dictionary. And so I'll have to specify what exactly am I asking it to pop? And so I have to say, okay, do a D1 dot pop A. Okay, so it also returns what value it has removed and it just like removes it as well, right? Okay, so that's that. Let me create it again. There is a method dot dot get, which essentially does similar to what we uh, did with D1 and then the subscriptable value. So instead of like writing the square brackets, you can also do dot get and if you do a dot get a, then it gets the value for you. So that's another way of getting a value, but we also know like how to get the value directly, right? D1 and then square bracket a, so that's like both of them are uh, applicable. Now, if you're adding elements to my dictionary directly, right? Because we've looked at dot add with sets, we've looked at dot append with a uh, uh, sorry, a uh, list. And what happens in dictionaries when we want to add a key value pair? Uh, so there are again multiple ways of doing it. There is this method that's known as dot update. So let's look at that, right? So D1 has like elements A and B, and let's say I want to add another 
key value pair such that like the key value is C and the like, sorry, the key is C and the value is like maybe 300, right? So one way of doing it is like doing a D1 dot update. So here it is, right? And what do you want to update it with? I want to say C equals 300. All right, let's do this. Okay, okay let's look at D1. What happened to D1? So that C got added. Now, another way of like using dot update and that is like more useful I've seen is that let's say I had something like, okay, let me remove all of this. We already know this. Uh, let's say I had another dictionary like D2, right? And let me create it with, uh, okay, A, B, C is already there. So let's have D and E. Uh, okay, values are anything I'm fine with that. Right, so this D2 exists. And what I want to do is I want to update my D1 such that it also has the elements of D2. So even like uh, this, is, these are like different ways of using dot update. So I can do something like this, like D1 dot update and then D2. But D2 has to be another like dictionary, right? So if I do that, let's see. Let's see what happened to D1, right? So I have like all the elements of both the dictionaries. Of course, if there was like some repeated key element, then it's not going to update that. It's going to retain what it had because of the fact that keys have to be unique. And also like dot update can directly do things like these, right? You can have like Z equals 10, like you can have multiple values in your dot update. So that's, that's something that can also be done. But of course, if you have like two dictionaries, this is the way you can put them together and like have like one dictionary. So these are some of the ways in which we can add elements to my uh, dictionary, right? Uh, of course, like we can add one by one. And then when we like start looking at how to loop through dictionaries, this will become like really easy. But for now, we haven't looked at like how to loop through dictionaries. So, so that's why we are looking at these methods. All right, let me go back and see if, we, yeah, this is a good one. Go and try this pop item, what it does. It's like, because, uh, here, like this is something that I always leave to the students to go and uh, kind of explore. How is it different from pop and get and how similar they are? So that's this is one thing to explore. So that's why I didn't touch that. Uh, dot update, we talked about that. Of course, like for any other Python object type, you've been using this help function. And this is extremely useful even for dictionaries, just like go and do a help and the name of the dictionary. So you get the name of the methods that are applicable or just do help and then DICT, it's going to give you the list of all the methods that are like uh, applicable on dictionaries. Then of course we'll cover more in the next lecture. As I said, that's why we have two dictionary lectures but it's like a vast uh, area, uh, of course. So in summary, what we talked about today is like associating keys with values is what dictionaries are. They make access to elements faster. And so that's why we resorted to this uh, dictionary based solution instead of the list based solution that was like an order n squared uh, complexity. And to access an element, you just like jump to that element, right? Always remember whenever creating dictionaries that these keys have to be any hashable values. Mostly, mostly throughout the course, we will use strings only. Let me be like extremely clear about that. We will be using strings only. I don't even remember if we have like a tuple as a um, as a key type, but sometimes, yeah, we might utilize like that. But, but yeah, it's like rare, I would say. Values can be anything and we'll see values can even be dictionaries, right? Uh, so that's it for today's lecture. There is this additional practice problem that I would like everybody to go and just like to give you a hint, most likely we should uh, be using DEL because we are trying to remove individuals from the dictionary. So like, in fact, that's the solution. So the solution to this problem is uh, you have this IMDB dictionary that we just created, count dictionary, and let's say you're given this like min count, which is a number. And all you have to do is go and scan through the dictionary and check only those like get only those values that are that have less than a min count. So either go and remove uh, elements like do a DEL or another way is create a new dictionary and put only those elements that are like uh, above this min count, right? There are two ways of like thinking about this problem. So you can go and try that. 
Uh, but that's it from my end for today's lecture. If there are any questions, please stay back. Uh, I also have office hours today, of course. Otherwise, uh, you're free to leave. Thank you so much for joining everybody.